Oh, I need you. <laughs> this young man here hails from Helena, Arkansas. I'm proud to say it because I helped pay for it. He got a Bachelor of Arts degree. He has a master's degree. <laughs> has 15 years of service in the uh, federal uh, workforce system. Very proud of him. So Y'all say man, for our substitute teacher, Vandal Bland, Jr. Now, I do know you can be here on time now. That's what that's what my brother-in-law was saying. He said, VJ, man, you made it here on time. I was like, you teaching? I said, yeah, I'm teaching. I'm teaching. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. You guys doing okay? Good, good. Uh, it is uh, a pleasure to be standing before you uh, this morning. Um, I don't take it light. Anytime we are... We're here in the Lord's Academy, uh, standing in front of Lady Deborah. Uh, she could have asked anybody, yeah. but uh, she asked me. And um, I don't take it, I count it a privilege to be in front of God's people. Yeah. Uh, you guys are my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I want to be correct when I stand in front of you. And we're just going to break the uh, God's word, man. Uh, yeah. uh, <clears throat> Brother Shay and Lady Deborah have so eloquently been speaking on the book of Ezekiel. They've gone over that book. Uh, the book of Ezekiel is uh, Ezekiel is a prophet. Uh, you have four major prophets. You have Ezekiel, you have Isaiah, you have Jeremiah, and you have Daniel. And we're going to expound on, on that a little bit more. But they basically covered everything. We're not just going to talk about the dry bones and talk about Ezekiel seeing the wheel this morning. We're going to kind of go in depth. You know, if I, you ever been in, in the Lord's Academy when I teach it, I try to make it fun. And so we're going to do some discussion, and we're going to all take part, because uh, you're your best teacher. I want all y'all to take a part of this. We only have 45 through the 48th chapter, and basically that's going to cover what Lady Deborah already talked about last uh, week. She talked about the millennial. Millennial is how many years did she say that was? A thousand. So that's when Jesus Christ comes back. Everything's going to be at peace. Brother Shay so eloquently spoke a couple of weeks ago about his part of Ezekiel, and we're going to talk about what happens between 45 and 48. Basically, we're going to cover a new ministry in the temple, but we're going to discuss and we're going to have fun. We're going to talk about what kind of prophet Ezekiel was. He was a prophet of man of immeasurable faith. And I want to read a story to, uh, before we start, an interesting story. So have your ears open. And so I want you guys to listen to this and tell me what you think about this story. It's an inspirational short story um, with the moral about trusting in God. He said, a man just got married and was returning home with his wife. They were crossing the lake in a boat when suddenly a great storm arose from out of the sky. The man was a warrior, but the woman became very much afraid because it seemed almost hopeless. The boat was small and the storm was really huge, and any moment they were going to be drowned. But the man said quietly, silently, and calm, as if nothing was going on while the storm was going on. The woman was trembling, and she said, are you not afraid? This may be our last moment of life. It doesn't seem that we'll be able to reach the other shore. Only some miracle can save us. Otherwise, death is certain for us. Are you not afraid? Are you mad? What's wrong with you? Are you made of stone or something? The man laughed and took the sword out of his sheath. The woman was even more puzzled. What he was doing, then he brought the naked sword close to the woman's neck so close that it was only a small gap between the sword and her neck. It was almost touching her. He said, are you afraid? She started to laugh and said, no, why should I be afraid? If the sword is in your hands, you're not going to do anything to me because you love me. He put the sword back and said, this is my answer. I know God loves me and the storm is in his hand. Y'all caught that? So whatever happens, it's going to happen, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Yeah. If we survive good, if we don't survive good, because everything is in the master's hands, and he can do nothing wrong. That's basically what we're going to talk about, guys, is about our faith in God. And since last time, last time I taught the Lord's Academy was in, um, I want to say, May or June 2016. I was really feeling myself. I think I was down to 160. I lost a lot of weight. <laughs> Wearing tight shirts, man. Now I'm about, I'm about, let me pick my weight up. Now I'm about 185. Now I can't fit none of them shirts I was wearing then. 
But uh, uh, sometimes, man, uh, as pastor was so speaking before I got up in life, what I'm finding out, the, the Lord blessing me to see 40, is that nothing is constant. Things change. And uh, true character is tested by the things that we go through, not things remaining constant. And from 2016 up until this present moment of 2020, it was a shift and a lot of things happening. Some things you guys know about, some things you don't. But one thing I was talking to somebody about this week while I was studying God's word is that now, the older I get, I thank God more for my defeats and for my losses than for my wins. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say that one more time. Mm -hmm. I thank God more for my defeats and my losses yeah. than my wins. Because in your wins, you can never develop true character. Right, right. When it, with your losses, when you go through some things, and that's what your faith is, is developed, your muscles are going through. It's just like when I was working out, you know, you got the, you got the when you're working out and you're messing with weights, you got to tear muscle down in order to gain it. And that's how God is doing us with our walk. We go through a lot of things that we don't understand a lot of times in life. You know, along this time, we lose people, whether it be death or whatever reason. Uh, things don't always happen. Our finances are not always good. Our health is not always good. But just as the story is stated, one thing we know, that as long as our hand is in the master's hands, yeah. that everything is going to be all right. Yeah. I'm a firm believer. And as long as we stay in the body, one thing that we should never get away from, no matter, and I like the way Manasseh preaches this. I know Pastor does this. He does a good job. He says, no matter what you go through, don't stray away from there. Yeah. I always stay here because it might not be, it might, you might not get everything out of the word, but it's something that God will put out there to keep you going, to keep you sharp. Yeah. No, never stray away, man. I thank God for you guys, and I, I thank God for you guys being open for us to do this, and um, let's, let's roll. Open your Bible to Ezekiel, the 45th chapter, if you have them. Like I said in the review, uh, Lady Deborah explained, like I said so eloquently, about the new temple that was foreseen uh, by the prophet Ezekiel from my study. Uh, Jesus said he'll come and he'll rule the earth for the millennial thousand years. His brother Barney, I think, answered back there. Uh, the book of Ezekiel gives a detailed description of one of the major prophets. Ezekiel. Uh, now, quick question before we go to the 45th uh, verse. What's the difference between the major and the minor prophets? Anybody studied about that? What's the difference between, because you'll hear that in the Old Testament, you'll hear major, then you'll hear minor. Yes, ma'am. Say it again. What's that? Okay, okay. Did y'all hear that? Everybody caught that? Yeah, good. That's, that's, that's correct. I can tell you've been studying. That's all right. You need to come up here and teach. <laughs> and she is so, and she's correct. You know, I, a lot of times when I was younger and I was going to Sunday school in the church, even to my adulthood, I thought, well, if it was talking about Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, or Daniel, well, God must have had favor on them. It must have been something about them. In all actuality, in all actuality, let me cut Siri out, y'all. In all actuality, it's just like Miss Tara said, it's just more information. Uh, you have Obadiah, you got Jonah, Micah, Nahum, uh, Zephariah, Haggai, Malachi. Those are ma minor prophets. It's, they have the same information. Those books just have more. So if anybody ever asks you, they try to charge you up in a barbershop, you know they like to do that a lot. And they don't think you've been studying God's word. I, it's simple to say, man, this has more information. That's all it is to it, okay? And so, like I said, what we're going to do this morning since Lady Deborah already talked about, we're going to concentrate on the faith that Ezekiel exhibited <clears throat> in the 45th chapter. Before we go there, uh, we got an icebreaker before I get there. Okay. Question, quick question. Why is it difficult to have faith in God? Mike, the mic, Mike, 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 all right. I would say because you can't see him. You can't see him. Anybody agree with that? Amen. Anybody want to add to that? Sound on that? Why it's difficult to have faith in God? Carl said you can't see him. We, we, we as people, we as people, 
we as people like to see. And when you have to have faith, sorry, when you have faith in God, then that's, you just got to believe. And you can't see. And, 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 and we just, we, as a human, we just got to see. Is it easier to have faith a certain time than others? Is it easier to look at I was just going to say, sometimes it depends on how you were raised, because I know of a young lady that was raised like that, and, and it went all the way back to her grandparents. You know, she just said she didn't believe in God because her mother didn't believe in God, her grandmother didn't believe in God, and just, you know, sometimes it depends on how you were raised. Well, I was just going to say that uh, I think we like to, uh, we don't have faith because we are people that like things right now. And so when we don't get things right now, we go to ourselves to do things instead of waiting on God to maybe lead us. So we like to do things our own self. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I lose my faith, but sometimes you need that old memory to go, go though. Think about the past. Don't let the past, let the past, bad we let the past go though. And think about the good time, not the bad thing. But you know, we, sometimes I lose my faith every once in a while. Like I tell Mr. David this morning, I lost me and the same fighting yet last week. But I had to let the past go. Sometimes memories that hurt you though, more than anything though. But I had to let, keep, if I tell you happy as long as I can, though, keep my trust in God no matter what though. Put my trust in God though. Oh, I was going to go back to the previous question, and that was, you said, why is it hard to have faith in God? First, you have to define what faith is, because we've been misled about what faith was. A lot of times, it plays into our problem, and, and the problem is man lean, leaning to his own, uh, yeah. own, own understanding. And, and the problem is, is that, man, I don't like to say that, I just said me. Uh, problem is, is that I want to do what I want to do. And, and not only that, I want it like I want it. And, and not beside that is, I want credit for it. Um, and faith, faith, faith is simply taking God at his word. The first thing is, I've got to find out what did God say. And I've got to understand what he said. Because many times, I don't know, uh, it's bad. Sometimes people do it on purpose, and sometimes they just get it wrong. But you, it's, it's not a good feeling when people take what you said and take it the wrong way. It's not a good feeling because, I mean, you really, you didn't mean it like that. And some, sometimes people will, like they did Jesus, the Pharisees, they would ask him something in order to take it and twist it around. Uh, but faith comes by hearing. I have to hear God. I have to know what God said. And then I have to take God at his word. You know, and most of the time, God's ways are not my, my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. And so what God is saying is contrary to what I want to hear. And so that's the problem. The problem is, and that's why when I really want to do something, I don't ask nobody about it. I don't ask nobody about it. Now, if it's a problem where I may get really bad in trouble about, I need to, you know, there's an option, I'll come to you. Man, what you think about this? But if it's something I already know, Brother Davis, but I just want to do what I want to do. I don't even ask nobody advice about it. Sometimes I make my decision is, you know what, whatever the consequences, that's just what it's going to be. And so it's not the fact of uh, so much wavering or whatever. It's, it's, it's the age-old problem about who and who, and I hate to even talk in Sunday school because it's really, I get my message, I already preach it. Uh, it, the age-old problem is, who is going to direct my life? It, it, you know, I like things simple, and that's why God gave it to me simple. Is it going to be God, or is it going to be me? It just, that's what it comes down to. And if what God is saying is not what I want to do and everything, it, that's a struggle.
Uh, that, that, that is so true. Thank you, Brother Carver. Let's give everybody a hand clap, man. So when Lady Deborah, when Lady Deborah come back today or tomorrow, if God bless her, come back safe and sound. I'm telling you, everybody gonna be able to teach the Lord Catholic because everybody can speak, Lady Deborah. They good. Uh, that that's so true, man. Like I was talking about in the beginning uh, uh, of the Sunday school lesson, in 2016, I was in a good place, man. Uh, doing married, things going good, finances going good. I'm pretty much like Kanye West. She couldn't tell me nothing. I had thought I had faith. <laughs> thought I had faith. You know, but God let, 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 my, let my boat get rocky yeah. and let me be able to sit in the seat with somebody else and let me humble me. Humble me, man. So I said, it's very special for me to be up here now because I'm seeing things through different lenses. I'm more humble now. You know, you got to tuck your tail a little bit and I thank God for that. And my faith is different. And my God, and I appreciate God now. It's, it's, I think it's, I can trust him a little bit better through different circumstances right. because, like I said, you got to take some L's, man. Yeah. You got to take some L's in order to win sometimes. It doesn't do nothing but build your character. So I really, really am thankful this morning. I thank God for that. I thank God for you guys. Uh, for your input. I need some people to get four scriptures for me. We're going to read. These are some key faith scriptures. Just some volunteers, if you will. We're going to open up. We know, even though we're studying the Old Testament, I have to say this because I'm a true believer of Romans 2 Philemon. I believe in the grace ministry. We know that, uh, that like the scriptures say, our scripture is given is from God. It's God ordained. It's inspired from God. But we know that this, was, uh, this is from Judaism. This is to the nation of Israel. We know that, right? All right, so we want, we want to keep that in mind that this is not to us. I'm speaking to the Gentiles, but a lot of this is going to the nation of Israel. Let's go to Romans. Let's read 117. Somebody get that. Let's see what that says about faith. All right. All right. Everybody got that? All right. Anybody got Hebrews 11 10? This mic. Anybody got a Hebrews 11 and 10? Let me know just somebody when you get it. So let me know when you have the scripture. Yes, ma'am. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builders, whose builder and maker is God. Okay. Let's go. Ephesians 3 and 12. Mother Minnie. In whom we have, I got to see. Boldness. boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Okay, thank you. Philippians 4 and 13, that's a familiar, I can do all things. Everybody, everybody know that I can do all things. Okay, very good. And Pastor already smiling on that. Uh, I like it, man. I'll tell you what, I have to go back to a lot of things that he says. It's simply uh, trusting God, taking God at his word. Do I really believe? Because it's hard, like uh, Carl Ray said at first, it's hard to believe in something you can't see. I ain't lying. Y'all say Oprah went for a billionaire, but I ain't seen a billionaire. <laughs> but it's hard to. Yes, sir. And, and, and that's why, like you're saying, that you see it from a different perspective. It's, um, it's like you say, it's hard to see something that you can't see. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the reason, you know, there's two ways to get information, to, to, to get understanding. One, there's two ways to learn. First way is by information, the other way is by experience. Experience is the best teacher, but it's so expensive. It's so expensive, and as I get older, Mother Minnie, I try to be a little wiser, and I try not to have to go through everything in order to, um, to, to believe it. I, I try now that sometimes what you tell me to believe it and not have to go to the go to the penitentiary myself to believe I don't want to go. Okay. Amen, Pastor. All right, guys, let's look up here before we go to 40, uh, 45. Ezekiel, as we discussed it, was an unheralded, an unheralded hero of faith. He lost his wife. He lost a lot of things. Like I said, when, when we go to church, a lot of times when we do the International Sunday School lesson, People stray away from these major prophets because they just want to talk about the thing that they know about. Like I said, the wheel in the middle of the wheel. They want to talk about the valley of the dry bones, but Ezekiel was bigger than that. God gave Ezekiel a task to perform as a prophet, to go out, and he had to perform that. So we have to remember that. Ezekiel made extraordinary sacrifices, including being the object of much ridicule, in order to be a living symbol for the people to see. 
But of all the difficult things God told Ezekiel to do, is what God told Ezekiel not to do, which stands alone, is the most extraordinary. God took his wife and then told him not to weep for her. That's hard to lose your wife. And, God, and Ezekiel obliged. He obeyed. That has to rank up with Job and Abraham as one of the greatest demonstrations of faith and character in our Bible. And it's surprising that Ezekiel's act of obedience is not discussed more. Martin Luther King Jr. has a, a very, very good quote that I used to quote a lot. He said, he doesn't measure a man about how he's doing in convenience, times of convenience, but how a man does when things are bad. You see, Pastor always says, man, you should true person's character when he's down. I'll tell you, when I'm down, I'm down, Pastor. I can't. <laughs> I'm down. I'm weak. I'm weak, brother. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm like the hero of Melvin the Beautiful Blue No Song. What? Well, I'm weak for you. I'm weak. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I brag about the fact how I don't, you know, I don't like gospel music. I listen to Scarface and all that right there. But brother, yes sir. When when the hard when the, when the hard times hit, yes sir, yes sir. My radio stay, it stay on Slim and the Supreme Angels. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, yeah, it just and and, 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 and God is good because it, it 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 brings us back to the commonplace that, girl, you know what, the. Uh, I'm a true believer in uh, recovery. When you go to Narcotics Anonymous, Cocaine Anonymous, Cocaine Anonymous, Alcohol Anonymous, they have a 12-step recovery program. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, in order for them to get the whole effect, in order to be sober, you have to realize that you're powerless. I have no control. I, I got the money in the bank. I got a good job. Things going seem to be going good, but God, you the author and the finisher, man. I got no control. And what makes it so evident is every time we roll somebody in front of here, every time the pastor said we go to the hospital, every time we get a phone call and we have to go to the jailhouse and visit one of our relatives, we realize that, God, you know what? No matter how much money I got, no matter how much prestige I got, God, I have no control. I have no control. And so when we realize that, that's when our life starts becoming better. And that's when, as in recovery, I've been drinking coffee something for there, nine, ten years old, we've been going down there. That's realize it works. It works. It works for you. It works for you. So we have to realize that. <clears throat> it's just this was a simple question I got. Could you do the same? I think it'd be hard for a lot of us to do the same if we went through that and we lost our wife. Can you think of anybody in your life that exhibited faith? I'm pretty sure we can think of a whole lot of people that we know that have faith, had faith in trying times. Next slide. I think where they have messed us up, <clears throat> I think where they have messed us up in church is, is that they actually have convinced us that we have to do something. And no matter what it is that God want, wants done, he's going to do it. If you're doing something, it ain't God. It is not God. And it's just something like people are like, well, man, I could never pastor. Yeah. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do that. No, you can't. But if God wants it done, he'll pick who he wants, and right. he'll do it through him. That's right. And it, actually, if God is controlling it, you can make it. You can do it. That's right. But you ain't going to control nothing. No. You ain't going to control nothing. I ask folks here at the church one simple thing. <laughs> because I'm in, I'm in covenant with them. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a relationship with, with people that go here. Yeah. I'm in a relationship with you. I'm with you. Bad times, good times, death, whatever go on, I'm with you. And so therefore, uh, I just ask one thing, and that's, this is what people in relationships do. I say, if you're not going to come, would you let me know? You let me know nothing. Most of them in their mind, they probably say, are you out your mind? Yeah. I'm grown. I see you when I see you. You see what I'm saying? But I can make it through that because God is controlling. Yes, sir. But yes, if sir. it's me, then I'm getting mad. I ain't fooling with none of y'all, nigga. <laughs> like, like I said, in, in goes, I'm going to take over each clip, then, but it even goes to marriage. If God is in that marriage and God is, and, and they, they got this fantasy out here about marriage. You don't got your prince charm and he'll come in on a white horse. He ain't going to cheat like the other folk white hubman do. He ain't going to do this. He ain't going to do that. You just don't know what he's doing. 
Well, anybody got any sense, they don't tell everybody everything. It ain't none of your business what's going on in my house. But the same thing going on in your house going on in the other folk house. And you're going to have to ride that. And the only thing that's going to help you, because I'm going to tell you what, if you don't love somebody, you, they get on your nerve real quick. Real quick. Ain't got to do nothing but just leave the, 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 the top off the mustard. I'm gone. I'm gone. But if you love them, I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. You go to grab the door and you can't even, Edna, you can't even turn the door now. Love won't let me go. I think that was William somebody. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want to expand on that? Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Okay, guys, before we open up for 45, I know I told you guys to go there around 10, 15 minutes ago. This is a brief outline about Ezekiel. This is what our brother Shay and our lady Deborah went over. About his calling commission, about how God had his hand on him. God's word in him, God's message. We discussed that through chapters one through three. Uh, the judgment on Judah, when God's glory departs, those chapters four through 24. Uh, Brother Shay expounded on that. The judgment on the nations, all nations answer to God, chapters 24, five through 32. And the chapters that we're gonna go over a little bit before we close, the restoration of God's people in the temple about the millennium, God's glory returns. And the book of Revelations, if you go to the 20th chapter through the 22nd chapter, uh, God inspired, uh, Jesus inspired John to write about that. It's the same thing that we talk about in Ezekiel. All right, the thing they had, this God will be known through his judgment and restoration. God is sovereign over heaven and earth. And we know that whatever God does, he can do it because he is a sovereign God, right? All right, let's go to 45. And let's... Let me say this, boy, you're a teacher. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Dad. I love you, man. I love you. I'm, I'm telling you what, man. I'm going to say this before we write. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it for real, for real. I am in a more and more grateful place in my life. Yeah. Good. Good. And um, I was so excited to do this because I know that it can be taken away. Oh, yeah. And I don't want God's spirit to be taken away from me. I love God. I love God. Uh, more than... More than any being, more than anything, I love God. More than anything in my life. And uh, I know it's nobody like God. Nobody. Nobody like God. And uh, yeah, I love him. I love him. I'm telling you, man, he'll rock you to sleep. I'll tell you, he'll rock you to sleep, man. He'll, he'll, he'll come see about you when you ain't got nobody else see about you. He put some money in your pocket when you ain't got no money. I'm telling them like the old folks say, you put some bread in, you put some bread, you put some food in your refrigerator when you ain't got no food. God, come see about you, man. When you're acting, when you ain't your best, when you, he still love you. Unchanging. Unchanging. No friend. There ain't no friend like him. No friend, no friend like him. Let's go to 45, y'all. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to read the first five verses. And these first five verses... I'm going to talk about it because I already discussed it uh, with Lady Deborah. They pretty much went through it. But we just want to give this brief synopsis and talk about the first five verses and talk about the allotments. And we're going to talk about the allotments for the land of inheritance and what it was about. On the first five verses, I'm going to read that uh, to you guys. And I'm reading this from the Gideon Bible. Don't talk about me. This is the prison Bible. I'll break it down. I get this from the chapel. I can break it down better than the King James Version. <laughs> All right. Moreover, when you divide, the land by the lot into inheritance. You shall set apart a district for the Lord, a holy section of the land. Its length shall be 25,000 cubits and the width 10,000. It shall be holy throughout its territory all around. Of this shall be a square plot for the sanctuary, 500 by 500 rods with 50 cubits around it for an open space. So this is the district you shall measure, 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 wide. And it shall be the sanctuary, the most holy place. It shall be a holy section of the land belonging to the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary who come near the, to the minister to the Lord. It shall be a place for the housing, a holy place for the sanctuary. An area 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 wide shall belong to the Levites. The ministers of the temple, they shall have 20 chambers as a possession. I want to stop right there. Lady Deborah, remember what Lady Deborah talked about the Levites? Levites. Christ is a priesthood, right? We talked about that. We talked about that over and over again. And they're not going to be able to have the role that they thought they were going to have, right? Because of what they did. So this 
I'm not going to go too far. The temple is really commemorative, okay? They have the lamb, the bulls, they have the cherubims, all that. We, this is just Jesus showing, a commemorative showing of what's going on because we're not going to need another lamb and no sacrifices like that. Why? The lamb has already been slain. Christ came down one. If we didn't, what the scripture said, it being no effect. If, he would have, if, we, if we didn't need a savior that came down time and time again, we wouldn't need to serve him. He did it one time. All right. Let's go. Uh, like I said, it was talking about the first allotment portion is for the Lord, the holy portion, where the house would be, as we said, 25 cubits long and 20,000 wide. The priest's houses would be the allotment portion of the section. And like we said, the Levites will have. Uh, a section next to this. Let's go to this next slide. Okay. This really was supposed to be in the front, but I'm going to go on wherever the Lord goes with this. This is supposed to be my first slide. Give you guys somebody uh, talking to you, some barbershop talk about Ezekiel. Ezekiel simply means God's strength. Okay. That's what Ezekiel means. It's from Judah. It's a priest. Ministry doing it after the Babylonian exile. He was married, but his wife died during his ministry. We talked about how much faith he had to have losing his spouse. You know, if you ever lost anybody, I can't imagine what it is to lose your spouse to death like that. I know that's just probably terrifying. He grows up doing the reforms of Hosea. He begins the ministry around 593 at the age of 30 and concludes his ministry around 20 years later. So he's 50 when his ministry is decided. Prophesies mostly under the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, roughly contemporaries. We're his contemporaries, his contemporaries, Jeremiah and Daniel. Daniel is right after that. Lady Deborah's going to pick up on that next Sunday. He's exiled to Babylon and second deportation. 10 to 20,000 Israelites were deported in total. We can go to the next slide. Thank you, Ms. Tyra. All right. He reminded Judah of the sins that they had resulted in the exile. He said God would judge the Gentile nations. That was the 25th to 32nd verse. He said, encourage and strengthen the faith to the people by prophesying future restoration and glory. So prophets, what prophets do? Prophets foretell, right? So when you see somebody that come around in a van or a car and they got the ad on in Hayes or Facebook saying they're a prophet, they're going to tell you your future. So <laughs> I'm just playing with y'all. Don't go to them. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. The next. <laughs> I hope you don't go. God's Lord. There's one thing in the book of Ezekiel. Glory simply means God's power over and ability to judge the whole world. To determine God's conduct through history and revelation. We'll go to the next one. All right. The final vision that Ezekiel received fills the nine chapters of this book. The ones that Lady Deborah went over and the last three, uh, last three or four that I'm going over. It is provided in exile with four heartening assurances about the renewed nation of Israel. What were those assurances? Thank you, Brother Wright. First, pure worship will be restored in God's temple. Second, righteous priests and shepherds will lead the restored nation. Third, land inheritances will be reserved for all those who were to return to Israel. And fourth, Jehovah will be with them, dwelling among them. And them. So that's when Jesus comes, the thousand, set up everything like they need to be. Okay, this is what I wanted you to see. I'm pretty sure Lady Deborah already went over this with you guys. But this is what, an example of what the temple is supposed to look like thousand years right here you have the altar and you have the uh, the temple and the porch entrance you have the outer court right here you know when Lady Deborah talked about that you have the priest chambers you have the western building you have the singers chambers the porch gate the inner threshold you have the six little chambers inside of here private steps for uh, for the four tables and the 30 chambers okay this is what it's supposed to look like. Uh, this is an example. Uh, you guys, they have many, many examples on, uh, online. That's just one. I thought that would be the best one that you guys as you can see in here. They have it in color. They have it in full detail. If you want to look, up, look it up on YouTube, and they're expounding on it for 20 or 30 minutes, man, if you want to do a more in-depth study about Ezekiel and the new ministry in the temple. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Discussion question number one. All right. We're going to go around whoever wants to answer this. Why, why, do, uh, why is it that the Jewish people or the nation of Israel needed a prophet? Are prophets needed in today's time? If so, why are they needed? 
If not, who do you think is used in their stead, in their place? And you don't have to answer all of them. You can just answer one, one you feel. Anybody? Our prophets need it today. Our prophets, do we need prophets today? Huh? I was just, you can start with the first question. Uh, why did the Jewish people need a prophet, Pastor? Uh, the prophets brought a word from God to the people. Okay. So that he, 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 he was uh, instructing them. Okay. Yeah, so. tell them. Yeah. Everybody agree? Amen. Amen. Uh, I, thank you, Pastor. Do we need prophets today? No. Okay. I see how y'all look. Y'all look. Everybody here went down when I said this is a pass. I don't know, Brother VJ. You can't teach Lord's Academy no more. We got to have Lady Deborah up here. That's me talking about prophets. If so, uh, well, we said no, we don't need those. If not, does uh, anybody need to be used in the stead of prophets? Do we have anybody that's used and for place to them? Yes, sir. And give it to the people. Then we have a completed Bible now. That's right. We have 66 books. And in the book, and I think in the last book, it, it says if anybody add or take away from this, they yes, say, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, so sir. in the complete revelation, God has completed his whole revelation of what he has to say. Amen. I, I, said, I agree. I agree. I agree. I, I, it also says Jews require the sign. They require, the Jews require some type of sign in order for them to believe. We believe, I, we believe in the finished work of Christ, what he did. We believe, we believe on the cross. We, we believe that it was sufficient enough that when he came down, he bled, he hung, he died. We believe that he, he came for three days. We believe that he's here forevermore. We believe in that. Yes, think about it, man never had a problem until he became the Messiah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right, Pastor. That's right, Pastor. That's right. That's right. And, and that's the problem now. The reason that it's not working, it's the religion that they got going on, because they're steady telling you what you need to do. That's right. Instead of uh, uh, focusing and magnifying in, on what God has done, we look at Amen. 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 I'm so glad. Yeah, you friend me. <laughs> you friend me right now. You can turn to the next slide. Anybody else? Did I have to cut anybody off? I'm sorry about the money, man. I have a question. Okay, we don't have prophets. We don't need prophets. All right, the Bible. Then God sent our pastors, our preachers. Yeah, I didn't say pastors. I said preachers instead of a prophet. We have our preachers to help us to understand the word. Is if you look at things in Ephesians. Amen. He had just finished something. Amen. And just like it, at one time, like you said, down the journey, they had to bring bulls and goats mm -hmm. and whatever. God ordained that. Right. But the Bible even said, but now. Now. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. You have to write the divide. Yes, sir. That's it. Amen. And they had, they had me so stupid. Yeah. And it didn't, it didn't ever sit with me, most of the world, because I'm not a stupid person. Okay? I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. And when I'm presented to you, kind of, but I was like this. If you were sitting standing up there, and you had the collar on, and you had the collar <laughs> on, really, I'm just saying, man, I was raised like that. I right. was raised to respect. Right, right, right. Even right. 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 if the Right, 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 right. So, so, you know, I'm saying, well, I hate those people, you don't want people, I guess you don't, I just don't understand you Amen. Amen. Understand the word without a teacher. Mm -hmm. What scripture is? That's right. Sure enough. That's right. But it's the truth. I felt, I felt better before I got there. My self-esteem was high before I got there. When I got the time, they got to beat on me and said, let me hide what I lacked. Yes, sir. I would give them money. Yes, sir. And if I just did this, I would. Oh, stop. <laughs> I'm doing good. We're going to wrap up. It's almost time. Like Mama said, when Uncle George come in, that means your time is almost up. <laughs> so I, I I got probably like a couple more minutes, man, and I don't want to take away anything from uh, God's service. Uh, right here is just with the end of 47 and 48. Just talks about the new banners and uh, topography. And you talking, you got Dan, and you have all the tribes to just divide them. Uh, no, my voice won't carry over. But you have Reuben, Ephraim, Manasseh, Asher, Benjamin, Simeon. It's just it's just uh, Simeon is breaking everything down. I wanted you guys to see that. You can go to the next side. Discussion question if we had, but we had plenty, plenty of discussion. It says, what areas in your life do you redefine your obedience to God? How do you rationalize when you are disobedient and you don't want to admit it? Does obedient make you self-righteous? That's just something for you to pound on and think about. Uh, I just want to take this time to tell you guys that I am very, very, very grateful again for your uh, open ears, for your listening ears. And I'm always grateful when we get a chance to open uh, up God's word and break it down. I want to tell you, Pastor Blaine, I appreciate the opportunity to stand before the congregation. Uh, I thank Lady Deborah for being in her absence. And I thank you guys. I love you for being my brothers and sisters in Christ. Keep me lifted up, man. And let's enjoy the next part of service. Amen. Amen.